Rod, thanks for the invitation. And uh, it's now 10 years ago I had my interview with Espada. Uh, so I'm after you're still involved. At the back, you see uh, one of the weekends we had in, I think, the beginning of 2012, one of these desert traps, trips. I'm now back in Holland and now I'm visiting uh, Espada. And thanks for the invitation. I'm going to tell you something about return to performance after hamstring injury. Salam alaikum. So good afternoon, good night for everybody who is listening. We're going to focus on return to running performance after an acute hamstring injury. And over the last 10 years, and you all already saw it in the previous speakers, we had a lot of focus and a lot of efforts on the period between injury till return to play. And especially in team sport, return to play is the first team training. I think over the last 10 years, there were 15 randomized controlled trials published, 100 studies. And also when you look at ESPETA, two RCT completed and 20 studies. However, it all stops at return to play. And when you work in the field, so I work now at a club, you recognize that there's almost nothing known about the period between team, to team training and return to performance. And over the upcoming five till 10 minutes, I'm going to focus on the period between return to play and return to performance. Because there are only four studies published on this uh, return to performance. So this is one study. It's from a chap from Australia. His name is Rodney Whiteley. I think it's Rod, yeah which is team from Sally, they did a really, really nice study. In Australian football, they showed that about 50% have a reduced high-speed running distance decrease after return to play. So the running distance is decreased. Another study from Spain, from Manigucha, where they did it in real football, so in soccer, and they found out that sprinting performance is reduced just after return to play. So players are back on the field and they found out that sprinting is decreased performance. So when you're working at a club and you read this paper, you said, okay, decreased running and sprinting performance. And the question arises: should I, should we change our clinical practice based on these studies? And we also had the same question at our club, in Amsterdam, and we ask us the question, when is return to match performance reached? And I'm going to show you some data we collected over the last three years. Five teams were involved, and we compared the match running performance before and after injury. For this study, we included athletes, football players with a muscle injury. Today, we're going to focus on the hamstring, but we have the same data set on the rectus the adductor, and also on the calf muscle. We included injuries of at least seven days. And for making a reliable comparison with the pre-injury data, we included match play over 45 minutes. And around the world, and also in Amsterdam, we use two systems. That's a local system. It's a little bit more reliable. You can also measure deceleration, acceleration, and a global system. And the advantage of the global system that you can use it everywhere in the world. So during also all games, not only at the home games. So we were interested in maximal velocity. So when they come back to maximal sprinting velocity, the total distance they cover during a, a game, high intensity distance and the sprint distance. And I think this is an important slide also when you work at a club because you want to compare with pre-injury data. And then you have to make a choice. With what you can see and learn from this slide, on the x-axis we present uh, the number of games. So minus five means five games before the injury. And on the y-axis you see the velocity. And then you will see that also when they are uninjured, there's a variance of maximal velocity. And you have to take that into account if you want to compare post-injury data. 
But nevertheless, they will have their injury, then they will start with their rehab, and they will have the first team training. That's in gray here. So the young, the right side of team training, that's return to play. And now we have got the next phase, the team training, and what you will see on the X axis, the first game. And the dotted red lines, it's a little bit technical, these also present the error of your system. So we can measure, for example, a uh, speed of 34 km an hour, <clears throat> but we know there's an error, so we have to estimate it between 35 and 33 km an hour. So that's the limitation you have <clears throat> with these GPS systems. But nevertheless, you can use it in your own club if you also use GPS. So that's a little bit more the technical background. And when you work in the field, you're always interested in what are the results. And I'm going to show you the results now. And these results are new and maybe even a little bit different from what is already known. So pay attention. The first one is the maximal sprinting velocity. And what you see here on the i-axis is the number of games after return to play. So one represents the first game after return to play, two represents the second game after return to play. And what can you learn from this slide? 83%, repeat, 83% return to maximal sprinting velocity in the first or second game, and 50% even in the first game. The second parameter, again on the y-axis, the number of matches after return to play. And here, all players returned to the normal total distance in the first game. So total distance, you can expect that they can reach it already in the first game. The third one, the high intensity distance. And of here you see the velocity. And also here, 89% return to a high intensity distance in the first or second game. That's 83% in the first game. And the final one, sprinting distance. You can always discuss uh, what is your cutoff. We had it at 22.5. You can even uh, make a little bit higher. But nevertheless, and we were really surprised with this, Sprint distance is not impaired. In the first game, after return to play, 95% reach their pre-injury performance. And even when you take the second game account, all players return to their sprint distance in the first or second game. And I started with these slides on decreased sprinting and sprinting performance, which we expected to find also in hamstring injuries. But I showed you that the majority of these players they reach pre-injury performance level in the first or second game. And you, when you work in clinical practice, like I do, one head with a recess head and one head uh, clinical practice. Should these findings change your clinical practice? And the answer is very simple, yes, it should. Because these results show that it is possible to reach your pre-injury performance level in the first game following hamstring injury. I repeat, it's possible to reach a pre-injury performance level already in the first game after hamstring injury. So that's a clear and very important message if you're dealing on a daily basis with athletes and you've got access to GPS. So this is with my clinical, of with my practical head. Now with my research head, I would always say, yes, it's correct, but be aware, all research on return to performance, we have just started with this. And there's almost nothing done. And it's a very, very important field to study. So what is next? I think the next focus, and I touched it a little bit, but the next focus is also to have a look at the period between return to team training, what we call return to 
play in most studies, and the period before till return to performance. Because there's a lot of things happening, number of training, number of partial games between return to team training and return to performance. Nevertheless, to make it very simple, and it's really relevant for your daily clinical practice, yes, it's possible to return to pre-injury match running performance already in the first match. And I think when you work on a daily practice, the focus should be on this, and we should develop more research on the period just before the first match. Thank you very much.